sports fans welcome back to my channel okay today we're going to talk about lebron's weak competition in the 2007 run to the finals okay i talked a little bit about this in the last video but let's grind into this because it's the weakest run and overhyped run of all time okay it can be respectable, but at the time, same time, it's overhyped. We can't overhype it and expect for it to be respectable because it wasn't all that, right? First of all, LeBron played Detroit in the Eastern Conference Finals, a Detroit team that had only won three more games than Cleveland, right? So let's check this out. LeBron in the first round, in the second round, played Washington in the Nets, right? 500 teams. I think both of them was like 41 and 41, right? LeBron was the number two seed and Detroit was the number one seed. So LeBron played both of those teams in the first and second round, Detroit, I mean, uh, New Jersey Nets in Washington, right? Beat those teams as he was supposed to, right? Two 500 teams, he waxed them. Right. I guess we'll give him credit for beating choke artist Vince Carter and I guess you can say choke artist Jason Kidd. But we got to remember, Jason Kidd was on the downside of his career by time then. Right. He, he really wasn't that man no more. You know, he wasn't like the old New Jersey Nets when he had uh, Kerry Kittles and uh, what's his, uh, uh I forget this guy's first name, but Jefferson. It wasn't that same team, right? So, if I'm not mistaken, Gilbert Arenas didn't play when they was playing Washington. So, he was supposed to beat these teams as being the number two team. Two 500 teams. And let's, let, let's first say, LeBron James didn't make the playoffs his first two seasons, right? Second season, he had an all-star teammate, right? Jordan did not have an all-star teammate until 1990, right? And then 91, Pippen did not make the all-star team and Jordan still won the NBA Finals, okay? So let's get to the Eastern Conference Finals where LeBron played Detroit, okay? No Ben Wallace. I don't know why they traded this guy. I guess they probably didn't want to pay him the money. Um, In 2008, he will appear... appear on the Cleveland Cavaliers. He will play with LeBron, right? But getting back to 2007, they had Chris Webber, right? A bench player. Chris Webber, who was pretty much trash at that point, right? Um, LeBron beat that team, if I'm not mistaken, 4-2. So they had a starting lineup that nobody averaged over 20 points per game, right? So let me ask you a question. Before we even go to the NBA Finals. How is this possible in the 1980s that a guy who missed the playoffs his first two seasons, right? The next season in 2006, he chokes down a lead to the same Detroit team with Ben Wallace. He takes a 3-2 lead going back home and chokes in game, games four and five. And he loses. Now, I'm not saying that because he lost. I'm saying that because when you look at his percentages, his turnovers, his free throw percentage, his three point percentage, which he was trying to shoot a lot. Right. I consider you trying to shoot threes if you shoot at least two. Right. Two or more. Um, His field goal percentage. They were all. No good. Right. And he was a minus, I think, 12. In one of those games, in a minus four in one of those games, something like that. So he choked down a 3-2 lead going back home, right, when he could have closed it out. Now, let me ask you a question. In the 80s, with no Hall of Fame teammate, no All-Star teammate that year, LeBron is going to the um, 2007 finals. Do you think that would be <laughs> possible in the 80s? Michael Jordan going to the NBA Finals. I, let's just say anybody. Larry Bird, um, Michael Jordan, 
whoever is going to make the NBA Finals, Isaiah Thomas, without an all-star teammate, without an all Hall of Fame teammate, or a top 75 teammate, make the NBA Finals, right? In his second season in the playoffs, right? <laughs> How is this possible? When we look at the 80s, the, uh, the Sixers, the Celtics, the Pistons, the only way they made the finals, they had three to five Hall of Fame players on one team just to make the NBA finals, right? And sometimes they even lost. But LeBron James, who had only been in the uh, playoffs one time, makes the finals his second second time in the playoffs <sighs> how is that possible jordan was playing what 85 well let's just say 86 87 88 89 90 and 91 was playing three to five hall of famers in the playoffs in the playoffs while making the playoffs every single season he was in the league and he didn't have an all-star teammate until 1990 and still couldn't make the finals and we're praising LeBron James right in his fourth season what is it fourth fifth season made the NBA finals with no Hall of Fame teammate no all-star teammate He's making the finals. And we're praising that for beating a New Jersey net team, a Washington team that was 500, and then beating a Pistons team that the start five couldn't average over 20 points per game in the series. And they had a bench player, Chris Webber, who was a Hall of Fame player. Now, I don't even know why he's a Hall of Fame player. Okay, I, I, <laughs> he's decent, but he was on the downside of his career. Okay, if we want to give LeBron props in this era for doing this, that's the standard of his era. It's a weak-ass era. That's what we got to understand. It's not a strong era. It's a weak era. A guy, his second time in the playoffs without an all-star teammate, goes to the finals. Really? You couldn't even do that in the 90s. I don't think you could do that in the 70s. You couldn't do that in the 60s. Let me give it to you one more time. LeBron could not make the playoffs in 04. He didn't even make the all-star team. Um, second season with an all-star teammate, El Galskis, couldn't make the playoffs. And then made the playoffs in 06. And now he's in the finals in 07. What kind of era is this, bro? What kind... And a lot of times we talk about, you know, how weak the East was in 2010. I don't think the East was that weak as compared to when he came into the league. Right. It was a weak era. It was so weak that um, Paul Pierce, Ray Allen and Kevin Garnett had to come from, well, Kevin Garnett and Ray Allen had to come to the East, right? And even make this some kind of competitive East. They had to come from the West. And it was so weak that when LeBron in 09 and 010, he still had the best record, right? In the East. Over Kevin Garnett, Paul Pierce, and Ray Allen. And he won back-to-back -back MVPs. This is a weak East. Right? I'm trying to tell you. Man. This guy gets patted on the back for going to the finals and pooping his pants against Tim Duncan. And I think Tim Duncan was um, as old as Magic was in the 91 finals. That's how old Tim Duncan was in the 07 finals. Right. And all these games were close in the 07 finals. You know, five points here, six points there, and they could have won. But the difference was LeBron 
as we can see, game one, 14 points, seven rebounds, four assists, one steal, one block, five turnovers, and 25% from the field. Really? Two for six from three, 33% from three-point land. He did hit all of his um, free throws, but he was a minus five. Game two against the Spurs in the NBA Finals, 25 points, um, seven rebounds, six assists, one steal, zero blocks, six turnovers, um, 42% from the field, 0% from three, 63% from the line, and was a minus five. Okay. Game three, 25 points, eight rebounds, seven assists, two steals, one block, five turnovers, and he shot 39%, right? From the field. 0 for 5 from 3. 0% from 3. Why is this guy shooting a 3? Now you can see why these guys were losing. Game 1, he attempted 6 threes. Game 2, he attempted 2. Game 3, he attempted 5. And he shot miserably. Uh, so game 3, he did shoot 87% from the line. And he was a plus 4. That's it. Game 4. In a sweep, 24 points, 6 rebounds. He did have 10 assists, 0 steals, 0 blocks, 6 turnovers, 33% from the field, 2 for 7 from 3, 28% from 3, and he shot 33% from the line, right? And he was a minus 2 somehow, I guess because he had 10 assists, right? Ball dominant, you know, he, he he's going to put his point guard in his – guard his shooting guard out of the mix right he's going to make sure he gets his assist it's a when you play with lebron it's a positionist league right and that's why he's always going to get beat six to uh four and six in the finals six finals blowout losses because he puts his team at a positionless um uh team sport that's what he does if you grew up playing position basketball where the point guard has to have a certain skill, the guard has the shooting guard has to have a certain skill, the forward and the power forward have to have certain skills, and the center has to have a certain skill, right? That goes along with your fundamentals. LeBron is gonna make sure that doesn't happen. Bro, whether you want to be the point guard or the forward, you can't play forward and then go to point guard and take my position, right? Just to get some stats. Now I don't know what I gotta do. Right. <laughs> I'm just floating around the court. I can't be a playmaker as a point guard because you want to be the playmaker. Well, who's going to who's going to be the forward? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. And he's not this great playmaker. He's not like Magic Johnson or Stockton or, you know, Jason Kidd or Steve Nash, where these guys are floor generals, Chris Paul. Right. He just has to have the ball. So. He leaves all these points on the floor at the line. You can see it right here. He did shoot 100% from the line um, in one in the first game. But the second game, 63% from the line. Third game, 87%. Not that bad. The closeout game, 33%. Who shoots 33% from the line? What? And this is what this guy does. Most of his um, possessions is driving to the basket, right? So he's going to get to the line a lot. You would have thought, right, if he's going to be like on Kobe's level, Jordan's level, even the Magic Johnson shot like in the 80s, right? <laughs> I think he shot in the, the, the upper 80s from the line, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. And then you see from three-point land, this guy is chucking up threes like he's a good three-point shooter. And we all know up until he got to Miami, he was a horrible three-point shooter, and he didn't care. He was still chucking them up in the playoffs, the regular season. This guy didn't care. Five a game, six a game, seven a game. Horrible free throw, uh, three-point shooter. But he doesn't take no for an answer, right? And But since he's a chosen one, he can tell his coach, I'm going to do what I want to do, right? I'm going to do what I want to do. You can't be this so-called point guard, and you can't shoot free throws, right? 
Like this lie going around, Michael Jordan didn't have a left hand. R really? I'm going to tell you what right now. As a guard and a point guard, you're not even going to make the NBA if you don't have a left hand. You would get embarrassed in the 80s and 90s. That was tight defense, okay? You're not going to make the... <laughs> it's not possible. You're not going to win three gold medals in college if you don't have a left hand as a guard. Maybe a forward, maybe a power forward or a center, but as a guard... And as a shooting guard, as somebody who attempts 20 plus attempts a game, you're trying to tell me that you're not going to have you're not going to have a left hand. <laughs> Look, the only way you're going to attempt um, 20 shots a game plus and don't have a left hand if you're going to just be a spot up shooter. Right. That's the only way. That's impossible. What the <laughs> it is not possible. Right. So this is why LeBron got crushed once he went and played in the 2007 finals against the Spurs because they're all about fundamentals in position basketball. If you want to play for Pop, if you want to play for Steve Kerr in the Warriors, you got to play position basketball. Fundamentals. Right? And this is what a LeBron James team doesn't have. He's going to take the fundamentals and the X's and O's away from, your, away from your team real quick. Okay, because another thing is this guy can't shoot a mid-range. Right? So he thought he could go out there and shoot these threes and hit a couple and he'd be good to go. But it didn't happen. And he still can't shoot a mid-range. And that's why ultimately he went over to Miami so these guys can make up for his shortcomings. I mean, real, I'm talking about shortcomings. I'm talking about endless shortcomings, right? If it was just he needed to play with some good players, he would have just went over to Wade. I'm coming over there, which still was a woman's move, right? <laughs> nope. He had to get Bosch too. By 2013, he had to get Ray Allen too, right? Because he has so many shortcomings. And that came to fruition in 2013 when he came down in the finals and he bricked the, go, uh, what was it, the go-ahead three? And Bosch got the rebound and kicked it out to Ray Allen who hit the shot, right? If Ray Allen would have not have been on that team and he would have not have brought Chris Bosch, it would have been over. Well, they wouldn't, I don't even think they would have made it to the finals, right? Or they would have got crushed 4-0 by the Spurs. Or they would have got crushed um, by... OKC, okay, right? If they didn't have Bosch, this guy has so many shortcomings that he <laughs> he can't just get one good guy, right? Let me go play with Kyrie. Nope, he has to get Kevin Love too, right? And then you got to remember on the Miami team, right? It wasn't just Chris Bosch and D Wade and um, Ray Allen. He had a whole slew of sharpshooters, defensive guys, because this guy really don't play no defense. Yes, he made defensive teams, but Look at his position. There's nobody else to really challenge him, right? He's never had 100 blocks in a season. This guy won the MVP in Miami playing 61 games and had like 50 blocks on the season. And way less than like 115 steals for the season? That's a defensive first team? What? And he basically got the same numbers a little bit higher the next season when he won the MVP in Miami in 2013. He still didn't have 100 blocks or 200 steals, right? Why? Because this guy is about, I need my seven assists. I need my seven rebounds. Seven rebounds is weak. 6'9", 250, 70 pounds. Depends on when the, the PEDs are kicking in, allegedly. Charles Barkley, 10 rebounds a game. Carl Malone, 10 plus. Larry, Larry Bird, 10 rebounds. What's this guy's excuse? He doesn't want to rebound because he wants his seven assists, which really ain't that much. And you can get them easily because in this era, you could just, when the ball get passed to you, you could just dribble around, two, three dribbles, whatever, and then shoot the ball. And the guy will still get the assist. When you look at the 90s, 80s, and stuff like that, the guy had to be going into a two-step to the basket um, scoring. So they changed the rules for this guy. Like they changed the defensive rules for this guy. 
Couldn't make the playoffs his first two seasons. So what happens? They change the defensive rules because these guys lack the fundamentals. They go to the 04 Olympics, the LeBron era. They get crushed by Ginobili, right? A six-man, Argentina players. All, <laughs> really? 06 FIBA. They get crushed by Greece, sewer workers. None of these guys are in the NBA. They get crushed again. LeBron plays. He averaged in, in, in that 2006 season like 28 points per game. Wade came off a championship. You had Carmelo Anthony on that team and Chris Paul. And these guys thought they could beat people based off of athleticism. Nope. It's called fundamentals. X's and O's. And they got crushed. This is what LeBron James and his team, his teams do. They think they can beat you based off of athleticism. Because they saw Michael Jordan, how athletic he was. No, they got past the Pistons based on fundamentals, X's and O's. Right? That's how the 80s and 90s was. When you saw, um, who was it? Utah beat up on the Lakers. Shaq, Kobe, Nick Van Exel. Eddie Jones. Oh, I guess they're just crazy athletic, right? Those those Utah teams, right? <laughs> nope, they beat you on fundamentals. They swept them. They humiliated them two years in a row. 97, 98. That's why you have so many international players in this game today because LeBron, he done took the fundamentals out of the game. Right? It doesn't it doesn't matter if he wins or if, if he loses. It's just about stats. So this is the most overrated finals run in NBA history, what LeBron did. And then he got crushed at the end, right? Because he lacked the fundamentals, right? The free throws, the turnovers, the field goal percentage, the mid-range when he couldn't drive the lane. These type of things are fundamentals too, right? They're skilled, not just dribbling between your legs 300 times. That's what they want you to think, <laughs> They, they want you to think this is skill. Tell me what you think.